Hi everybody, I'm uh, Hannah Bontrager. I am co-choreographer, producer at Ballet Fantastique, and I also was able to play um, two characters in the ballet. So when we premiered it, I got to be Lydia Bennett, the um, youngest sister and bad girl. And then I totally flipped and was cast as Jane Bennett, and that is the good girl. And that was actually a real challenge, I will say, to kind of flip characters in the same ballet. <laughs> Jane, she kind of is pretty steady, and she doesn't, her character doesn't really change through the course of the story. I don't even feel like she's that shocked when Lydia runs away with Wickham. She's just kind of like really steady, big sister, everything's gonna be okay, and I'm a good person. <laughs> in real life, I'm Adam Goldthwaite. And in this production, I am the narrator, which we chose to be the voice of Parson Collins. I also did get to do a little bit of dancing, which I don't usually do. And he did great. Hi everyone, my name is Leanne Mazzoni and I dance the role of Lydia. I am Ashley Bontrager and I played the role of Elizabeth Bennett in both the first production and in the 2016. I was lucky I didn't have to do the dual swan thing like Hannah did. <laughs> I'm Juan Gustavo Ramirez and I danced the part of Mr. Darcy and it was my first role with Biffin, which it was great to do. Hello, I'm Carolyn Kaplan, everyone calls me Carrie, um, and I danced the role of Kitty Bennett in the production the second time. Um, and it was also my very, very first B-Fan show, so it's, it's a special one, near and dear. You know, I uh, served as a music director in this production and uh, also composed some pieces for it and performed with it as a guitar player. Uh, and this was just a super fun production. I mean, this was just, it was lighthearted, it was hilarious. There were, there were times it was hard to play and not watch and be engrossed with the action and keep the focus. but. Uh, yeah, just great fun. We thought it would be fun to, to narrate the story, but not just have a standard narrator. We wanted the narrator to be a character in the story as well. And you know a show is on the right track if our creative team, we just keep spitballing ideas and someone says something and everyone just like starts laughing and it just feels right. And when we started thinking about the, the show being in the Roaring Twenties in a French cabaret and all of these sisters run the cabaret, this show just really fell in, into place. And Adam said yes <laughs> um, <laughs> to a totally different role. And I think it has become kind of this quintessential B-fan rom-com. So it's just, it's fun to, to bring it back. Miss Hannah and I have known each other for a long time. We went to high school together, as a matter of fact. And since we'd had such a good time working the previous time, she thought maybe I could trust him with some dance moves and we could call him a dancer as well, uh, which horrified me still to this day. My favorite moment after one of these shows was someone approached me and they said, you know, I, I love the show, but and I couldn't tell if you were a very skilled dancer pretending to not know how to dance, or if you're a non-dancer trying really, really hard. And I, I had a good laugh about that. The fun thing about Kitty is that she doesn't, she's not a plot driver. She doesn't end up married at the end of the ballet. Sorry, spoiler alert. She comments on everything that's happening. And it's just so fun to be in that commentary role where you get to react to everything that's happening around you. And, and as I've said, it's close to my heart because it was my first B-Fan show. And so I was coming in as an outsider into a really tight-knit company, you know, of, of friends and family. And, and by the end of this ballet, it was special in that, like, I, felt like I was one of the sisters by the end. This was our first time dancing together on stage and we were definitely, well, I was definitely falling into like with him, as you say, <laughs> off stage. So on stage, it was really cool because it was sort of happening at the same time as in the story. And um, the, the angry part wasn't there. <laughs> so that was all fake, but um, that was a really like special memory that I'll remember forever, so. <laughs>
I didn't have only the challenge to do the character, but also like you were, I was new to the company, so it's kind of like what Kerry was saying, you were new to this place, you're trying to portray the best of you, you're trying to be the best in every single aspect, so it's not only like the character, it's also like your best technique, your best behavior, your best everything, so it just comes with like all these things, but I mean I end up loving it, every single part of it, it was a great challenge and I think it's one of my favorite shows, yeah. my first ballet to perform with and direct and compose so it was kind of scary but it all came together uh, concept came together I wrote a uh, three four kind of uh, overture piece when they saunter in at the beginning with their beautiful Parisian dresses and little umbrellas and it all just started kind of clicking and working I've had a lot of people come up to me and say that they've heard some of the songs before but that Jerry's version and his band the version that they created is their favorite. And we're really fortunate that they decided to create a CD for us of their um, of their mix for our ballet, of their score. And that's called Parisian Nights and, and it's available on the BFAN website for anyone who feels that way. We decided to kind of shock the audience by opening the curtains like on this raucous scene and everyone's kind of already dancing. And from that moment on, like you just don't stop. You, as Leanne would say, it was sort of like shot out of a cannon. I just remember this one moment and I believe it was the Boogie Woogie with when Hannah and I did together and Carrie. So we're on stage and it was towards the end. And like Hannah said, it's like you're being shot out of a cannon. Um, it was towards the end and we're doing this grand jeté and this like toe tap thing. And I just remember at that point, I just be like, come on Leanne, you can do it. Keep breathing, you can get through this whole thing. Am I crazy or was this the one where I got to do the big shoulder lift? Yeah, it was this one. Right? I'm a very physical actor. I like phys uh, physical comedy, but I'm not dancing is not really in my wheelhouse, so to speak. So I remember the day that, uh, <laughs> that I was told that it, it wasn't going to be performed on stage unless I could do it 10 times in a row without dropping her. <laughs> there's there's a line that it goes something like, we, we must allow ourselves to be happier than we feel like we deserve to be. It was something that every every time I read it, it, it struck me as a really, a really profoundly beautiful moment. Courtesy of Jane Austen, you know. <laughs> right. Oh, Miss Austen is um, universal and eternal. I write quotes on my point shoes. This is something I, I've done for years. Um, you know, something that helps me get into character or like inspires me or something like I, I need to hear for myself. And so I write on the soles of my shoes and um, I remember just like giddy, like writing Jane Austen quotes all over my shoes for this this production. I just remember you doing that because like Carrie said, this was her first show with us and I just thought that was so cool. So cool. Um, a personal favorite is um, a due to disappointment and spleen for what are men to rocks and mountains. And I think about that one every time I'm hiking or I'm upset with anyone or like, I'm just gonna go look at some rocks and mountains and it'll be fine. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a personal favorite. Adam, how did you land on the voice? I don't remember exactly how it went. I do remember the second time around trying to get you to let me do a really cheesy French accent. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and I, uh, I got shut down on that pretty fast. Shut down. <laughs> but where, where did that voice come from? Can you say something in the Parson Collins voice? Putting you on the spot. You guys want me to try it? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> From here, I see everything, all people. I see life. In gay Paris, all is a story. In Paris, the Lord works in mysterious ways. That's all you got. So good. <laughs> There's so many favorite moments in the ballet, and I'm actually really looking forward to watching it again and hearing this music and watching Ashley and Gustavo in this gorgeous prada, the um, stars shining bright above you. And 
it's just beautiful. I love it. I love all the parts about it. And I love Jane Austen. So <laughs> it was really a dream come true to do this. I always feel blessed to get to work with B-Fan and get to play with all these concepts that would never really normally fit together. But through this labor of love, they all just, they all just click. And this, this, this production was, is, and still is always really special for me. It, there was something extra that clicked in this one that, yeah, it's close to my heart. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. We love you. Thank you so much. And thank you all our amazing artists for being here. Sending you lots of love and we hope you enjoy the show and feel the love coming out at you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yay. Happy Valentine's and enjoy the show. <laughs> <laughs>